Jacob Sen Marketing Artfully. So today we're going to talk about one of my favorite things, which is long tail keyword SEO research. And I promise it's going to be fun. Um, everybody goes, oh, when I start to talk about this, but it's something that can really change your life. I just wrote a post about this on my website. And I, of course, use long tail keywords in my keywords. Um, so, uh, Google SEO, things like that. So let's talk about at 40,000 feet, what long tail keywords are, because there was a gal in a Facebook group the other day and she had written a post and I'm going to say, um, I'm using my friend Barb Grassy as, um, my goat that she's the book boss and she helps writers, she helps edit books, she helps um, coach writers, she's a successful author herself. And um, so I figure if Barb doesn't know how to do SEO, long tail SEO, then who does? So um, long tail SEO means kind of you're gonna go for the shortest version of the biggest keyword you can pick, okay? So I'll give you an example from my site. When I started my website years ago, I was trying to rank for real estate marketing. And, um, or let's go back to marketing, right? Like I was trying to rank for marketing. And there's no way I'm gonna rank in Google for the term marketing because there's a lot more bigger sites that can rank for that. But even real estate marketing, you know, if you do a search for real estate marketing, because marketing people do marketing, there's um million, there's over 1 billion results for real estate marketing, okay? And so I, um, I knew I had to do some other things that would help me rank for longer tail keywords like real estate marketing, marketing to a farm, Real estate marketing, funny realtor postcards. Real estate marketing, how to get your first listing. Like those are all um, longer terms. Now, would I use real estate marketing every single time? Heck no. I would say marketing your real estate business, how to succeed at real estate, at your real estate marketing. How realtors, well, you're not supposed to use realtors got in trouble for that one you got to watch your chart your uh trademark keyword terms but so real estate marketing so you have real estate marketing strategy tools ideas so then you can go even longer right so real if, if real estate marketing was your long like your shortest long-term keyword then you would add things on the end so we're going to go with barbs and we're going to yell at her so i found this on her site. How do I start my book? And I'm sure that this is super, super interesting to her people. And I love that she's answering a question that her readership or the people that she meets in public or her coaching clients have. So this is probably, I do this too. I'm like, okay, I get to ask this question a thousand times. I want to answer this question. How do I start my book? But from a standpoint of Google, if you go and figure out, I use a tool called Uber Suggest, it's free. And what they do is they pull in the Google search volume. So I did a search for how do I start my book? And this was closest to it, how do I begin to write a book? Um, so 40, and then let's see if we have how to start. How do I start a book, 30. How do I start my book? 10. So <laughs> those are searches per month. So I want to help Barb get ranked. So that's excellent. That's going to be like part of her title, but we need to get her longer, like more search volume keywords in her long tail. So let's, let's sort this by search volume. Can we search it by search volume? Go to results. Oh, find keywords within search results. That's awesome. Oh, and it's an order by search volume? It is in order by search volume. Okay, so uh, 
Okay, so how to write a book. How to write a book is our very, very, very best volume, 40,000 searches a month. So we got how, I'm going to write little notes over here, right? I'm going to do this. How to write a book. So now let's find out from Google how competitive that search term is because probably other people know about it. How to write a book, right? How to write a book. There's 64 million different how to write a book results. And that is if you put the quotations around it, it forces you to, it forces Google to just look up in that exact order, right? So if we took them off, so there's a million how to write a books. There's a billion how to write a books results. So we can't really probably compete with that very well, right? Um, so let's add a word, nonfiction. Right? How to write a nonfiction book. How to write a nonfiction book. Now we're down to 54 million results, which is still a lot, admittedly. But there's only 116,000 how to write a nonfiction book. So we went from billions to hundreds of thousands. So I would say we could start with how to write a non-fiction book, right? Or oh, we could do write a non-fiction book, how to, so we just moved our how to over, how to get started, right? Just by changing that, how do I start my book? right? Like how do I start my book is not good, but how do write a nonfiction book? Now let's see, Uber suggest, write a nonfiction book. It's thinking, it's thinking. Now isn't this fun? It took us two seconds to figure this out. Write a nonfiction book. Ooh. Oh. Darn it. Right. We want to filter it by words that have right in it. How to write a book. So that was our 40,000 book. How to write a novel. How to write an ebook. How to write a book. So we still have our how to write a book, how to write a book. Now, is it in order, right? So she may want to, this is it, this is where it gets super exciting. How to write a book for nonfiction authors, right? She may want to write a big giant post that is all about how to write a book for nonfiction authors, right? So here's my thing. This would be her bullseye. So this would be how to write a book for nonfiction authors. That is just blatantly going after the highest level of SEO long tail keyword that we think we can get. Then she would say, write a nonfiction book, how to get started. That would be one of these supporting posts. She would link back to that. She has other, she has other posts that are titled poorly that we will go look at. Because she has a lot of words here. She's a writer, so she can she can write some words. Girlfriend doesn't have a problem with that. Choose one. How long should your book be? So then she would do a writing nonfiction. How long should your book be? Which is slightly different, right? Writing nonfiction is different from write a nonfiction book. People ask me all the time, so if I get a long tail keyword, should I do that one over and over and over again? And the answer is no. 
Like that would be the most boring thing. And you would only be trying to get that one tiny long-term keyword search. Let's see what, uh, I don't want to know what choose one is. Except the worst title ever, Barbara Grassy. You know I love you. Um, okay. Write a book he had ideas for. Uh, as a marketing tool. Okay, so this is kind of about marketing. So we're going to say, um, uh, writing a non, now we got write a nonfiction book, write nonfiction, writing nonfiction, and writing a non fiction book to market your business, right? And so now we have our three posts that we can try to get to how to write a book for nonfiction authors, right? And as we do more and more content with those long tail keywords on our website or on our blog, most people have a WordPress or maybe a Squarespace at this point, um, but as you write more and more of those, you will go up. So in my first example where I was telling you, oh, Minnie's talking to us. In my first example, when I was telling you about my how to marketing to a farm or how to, uh, you know, do uh, funny realtor postcards and stuff like that, what happened was I wrote enough different posts that were about real estate marketing that eventually... Google began to give me credit, but in the meantime, I got Google traffic from those littler posts and my blog started to grow and I started to gain authority. So that is how you do long tail research in a super, super easy two-step way. Uber suggests find a better search term that has more searches and then do a search on Google to find out what kind of results they get. Oh, I forgot. One more thing. Ooh, this is very exciting. So you can also do this. So if you say nonfiction, I don't think it's going to be in there. I think we got to do nonfiction author association, nonfiction authors, but um, let's say write. Oops, if I could type, I would be unstoppable. Oh, shoot. Now we have to. I'm glad that happened, though. So because I did that write a nonfiction book search, we need to do an incognito window. So I'm on a Mac. So I do Control Shift Control Shift Command N. Just look up non open a non uh, an incognito women window. So we're gonna go Google, right? And then we're gonna say write a book in a month. In 30 days so obviously obviously there's a lot of quickness around like that would be some good topics you could use write a let's see what happens if we do nonfiction book outline oh my gosh she could do a um, an outline business plan that's nonprofit business plan so let's see write a nonfiction book Uh, fast, there's fast again. It seems to be writing a not see now. This is where now we're crossing over to the other word. So we went from write to writing, writing a nonfiction book for the first time. That's a really good one. And so as you do this, you're going to be able to find these things in Google and just start writing them down. Everybody wants to make this so hard. Google tells us exactly how to do it. And this is how I do my research. Now, I have all kinds of expensive keyword tools. I love SEMrush with the rest of us. I love, you know, uh, uh, the Google Keyword Planner. But nowadays, you can really start to get those super high-level keywords right from Google just from showing the search and then doing a little research. So hopefully that helps. Tara Jacobson. Marketing Art Flea. If you like marketing videos, please make sure to subscribe. And if you like this video, please be sure to leave me a comment below. YouTube really likes comments. And I will talk to you soon.